Welcome to Gen 3 here at IPC Apex. Uh, delighted to be joined by the Managing Director, Graham Nisbet. Actually now Chairman. Oh, actually Chairman. My, moved you upstairs. Well, <laughs> my dad passed away last year. So it's, it's really down to Gen 2 now. Right. Well, uh, congratulations on your chairmanship anyway. Um, you. You've always been at the, the forefront of um, testing, innovation, standards. Um, and uh, you've been pioneering a lot of the SIR work uh, in, in the industry. There's a number of challenges coming down the pipe, specifically related to electric vehicles. Uh, yeah, I mean, typically the, today they're using a lot of low voltage um, materials, uh, but there is a requirement going forward for much more high voltage. Tell us some of the challenges. Well, the challenges are that the industry is pretty much divided between low voltage high current or high voltage low current and the penalties that exist with either option are potential compromises to performance and reliability. What sort of ranges are we talking about? Well with electric vehicles at the moment the two schools of thought are to go with say 48 volt with up to 1200 amps of power or high voltage around 1250 volts carrying around 50 amps. Now the challenge that exists from that point of view is that an electric vehicle or hybrid electric vehicle once delivered is switched on and stays on. So an internal combustion engine has a duty cycle or a life cycle of 12,000 hours representing around 15 years of warranty life. So you're telling me that they, they, they're going to switch this vehicle on and it's going to be on for 15 years? Correct. And, and what it means is that if you have an accident or something untoward happens, and you haven't got all the safety characteristics in place, then 1,200 amps of disposable power can be quite challenging. Well, it will certainly make your, <coughs> your eyes leak at minimum. Um, so what is tending to happen is a move toward high voltage, low current, uh, as much because that reduces some of the burdens that otherwise have to be put in place when you're dealing with high current loads. So high current loading power supply assemblies will not unusually have anything up to 10 or even 12 ounce copper and internal buzz bars. Whereas with high voltage, low current, you can, you can gain the advantage of reducing weight um, so what, what we've been doing with our instrument, which is designed to do either surface insulation resistance measurement or subsurface insulation resistance measurement, which is the differential between SIR and CAF. They are essentially the same technique, but we're measuring from different aspects. The, the other part of this equation is that we are being asked by the medical industry and microelectronics and space applications to be then working at very low voltages, typically less than two volts. So the range of requirements for the measurement to be as accurate as possible is what we've been addressing with this new development on the system. The system basically is going to cover all the low voltage measurements or the ultra low voltage as well as the, as the high voltage used in the electric car industry. Correct. That's a, that's a huge range, you know. Um, it's a, uh, and they're going to be using both. Uh, is, is, is a car manufacturer likely to be using some applications where he's using low voltage or is it just, uh, I mean, I, if he's using high voltage then I guess he's going to be using that for all of the power requirements in that vehicle? Yes, I mean I'm not directly involved with the design of the electronic circuitry so for sure electronic circuits within electric and hybrid vehicles will be operating at lower voltages uh, but from our point of view all we have to make sure is that one instrument 
has a far broader range and capability and maintaining accuracy when you're doing the testing. So the range of testing you do in this is, is surface insulation resistance? Uh, yes. It's either SIR or it's CAF. All we do is to change the decal on the front. The just, just remind us what the acronym, the acronym CAF stands for again. It's conductive anodic filamentation. In other words, it's subsurface electrochemical activity. Um, it's a huge area, uh, really. It is. And because of the higher voltages that are being used, it's presenting some new technical challenges because it's not restricted to electrochemical migration. We have other phenomena that we have to be concerned about, not with this instrument, but with the techniques in the design of the vehicle's electronics, such as flashover, such as corrosion, even to the extent of electro-migration. And electro-migration is a different ball game altogether. I'm sure with the history of uh, some of the, um, of the car industry, uh, it's, 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 um, they're, they're very aware of that and it's, some, it's got to be very high on their list of things to, to be looking out for. Absolutely. And we're right there to help them. So there you go. So, that's the, so the SIR S2 Plus, um, that, that, that's the name of this, this instrument, is that correct? Yes. We hesitated to go to the third generation instrument because we've still got a lot of other development work. The most important part, actually, is to create a fully integrated package to optimise health and safety. Because, after all, if somebody is doing a thousand hours of testing at a thousand volts with a damp heat chamber running at 85-85, <coughs> you want to make sure that nobody can get hurt. Well, a lot of challenges ahead. I mean, we've just had a, a panel discussion on these, these types of uh, challenges with materials science, and uh, it's good to see that you've actually managed to come out with something that is going to cover certainly the ranges that are going to be used uh, over, over the coming years. Uh, so, yeah. So, uh, thank you for showing that to us today, Graham. Thank you, Trevor. Pleasure as always.